Jimmy Page. Frick, he's good at guitar. I have not been shy about the influence that he had on a little boy with a bowl cut named Zach. Uh, he's far from perfect musically or personally, but with that aside, the level of confidence and swagger that he displays each and every time that he picks up the guitar is impressive. I am Zach of all singer, songwriter, guitar player extraordinaire, and today I want to talk to you about his first and to date only solo album called Outrider. It's an album that gets often overlooked by fans of Led Zeppelin, guitar music, and rock music as a whole. So let's check it out. With the death of John Bonham, Led Zeppelin disbanded in 1980. Page's time in the spotlight, however, was far from over. He would perform at a Jeff Beck show in March of 1981 and form a supergroup called XYZ with Chris Squire of Yes and drummer Alan White. Nothing but a few bootlegs ever materialized out of this group, though. Page would contribute to the Death Wish 2 soundtrack. He would also reunite with a variable who's who of musical friends like Eric Clapton, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and the Rolling Stones for their 1986 single, One Hit to the Body. He would also finally get sober from heroin during the early 1980s. Also during this time, he purchased Soul Studios from English producer Gus Dudgeon. It was in Soul Studios he would produce music for the Death Wish 2 soundtrack and some songs for the Death Wish 3 soundtrack. He would also record Outrider here. In early 1987, Jimmy Page hit the studio to record Outrider. It consists of eight original pieces of music and a cover of Leon Russell's Hummingbird. Three of those tunes are instrumental songs. It sees Page reunite with Robert Plant on the song, The Only One. It also features John Bonham's son, Jason, playing drums on seven of the tracks. As far as gear Page used, I couldn't find what he used specifically on this album, just what he was using during this time period and the subsequent tour for the album. I do know he would often use Vox amps, Orange amps, or Fender amps in the studio while using Marshall amps and High Watt amps live. I would imagine an AC-30 was used on this album as I've seen him use that live uh, during this time period. It could also have been a Vox UL4120 hybrid amp head. He has mentioned using those in the studio as well. He used a lot of amps, so it's hard to say with any degree of accuracy what was used here. As far as guitars for Outrider, during this period he mainly seemed to use his number 3 Les Paul, the 1969 Les Paul Deluxe with a Parsons and White B-string bender. At least, that is the Les Paul he used on the Outrider Tour. It has been speculated he owns a similar color and model guitar, and could have used that here as well. The one on the cover for the album looks like hit the famous number one, the 1959 Les Paul. I was able to confirm that he did in fact use the 1959 Les Paul on the song Prison Blues. Also during this time, Page would be seen using a 1953 Botswana Brown Fender Telecaster featuring, again, a Parsons and White B-string bender. A fun fact about this guitar is that the rosewood neck from the legendary Dragon Telecaster replaced this guitar's original maple neck. The acoustic guitar was likely a 1970 tune Martin D28. He used that on Led Zeppelin IV and subsequent albums and live performances from Led Zeppelin IV on up. He's also credited as playing synthesizer on the album as well. As I listened to this album a couple of times to prepare for this video, uh, I came to the conclusion that it is just the very definition of okay, and I think I said the exact same thing in my Van Halen 3 video. Uh, where I think Van Halen 3 kind of lends more towards the crappy end of the spectrum and I mean no disrespect it leans towards the crappy end of the spectrum like Outrider is solidly in the middle there isn't anything that stand there's no bad songs on the album but there isn't anything that stands out as exceptional I mean at least if I'm looking at it objectively um, I mean it's kind of what you would expect from Jimmy Page just epic riffs and awesome guitar solos. I mean, for all the critiques that he gets as a guitar player, at least we can all agree that Jimmy Page has got the riffs and rhythm thing 
down to a science and it's on display here. Um, I mean, with any album like this, it's hard not, and, and any artist like Jimmy Page, it's hard not to compare uh, this to anything he did before. So like with Led Zeppelin and things like that, or The Firm or The Yardbirds. And so unfortunately with that in mind, the material on Outrider isn't even in the same zip code as the stuff he did with Yardbirds, uh, Led Zeppelin, The Firm, uh, anything he did, you know, post Zeppelin, even with Jeff Beck and things like that. Uh, I think this is just slightly less than that. Um, I, it's more like, the quality is akin to what you would hear on Presence and In Through the Outdoor. Cool, but not like peak Jimmy Page, um, if that kind of makes sense. And then you also have to, when you're wanting to critique an album like this, look at it in the time period that it came out. What was the material, that what was being listened to at the time, and in 1988, you're thinking like, you know, this is kind of like peak 80s heavy metal, so like Guns N' Roses, ACDC, and really like glam rock, arena rock kind of stuff, so Queen and Kiss and things like that. And those albums by, you know, those that type of music tends to be, in my opinion, a bit produced. Um, I, I would also say just from an, just having produced a few records myself, I think they, you know, I know for a fact they are kind of heavily produced. And so there isn't that freedom uh, that, you know, what, you know, classic you know that we think what that we think of when we hear where the term rock and roll and outrider does have that freedom and it's not really trying to be um a, a super produced you know pop rock album um at all the closest that it gets is the opening song uh wasting my time featuring john miles on lead vocals that feels like an acdc song it, it, the first time i heard it i remember thinking to myself because i heard this album a few years ago that it feels like an ACDC song. The guitar riff feels like something that Angus Young would come up with. And even John, John Miles' vocals feel kind of like, not quite Brian Johnson, maybe more Bon Scott era of ACDC. Um, and so speaking of vocal tunes, um, one song I was looking forward to the most was um, the song, I think it's the third song on the album called The Only One, which features Robert Plant on vocals. Um, and I know that Robert Plant during this time get, got dogged on a lot for his, I don't want to say bad because they're not bad vocal performances, they just weren't Robert Plant with Led Zeppelin. And there, there's a lot of reasons for that, is he's a little bit older by this point, so he can't be running around the stage with a sock in his pants, you know, screaming at the top of his lungs. But he can do um, more laid back stuff, he can bring it down a notch. Um, a good example of that would be even with Led Zeppelin. Um, you know, from Led Zeppelin too, what is and what is and what should never be is a very laid back vocal performance uh, for most of the song. And then even later on, the stuff he would do with Alice and Krauss, he can do laid back. So I'm not exactly sure if that's what he was going for here. It just, it didn't land with me, is what I'm trying to say. Um, it just felt like he was uninterested in what he was singing. And even when he's doing laid back vocals, uh, he's there's a passion to it and it, I just didn't get that from him here on this song and even the instrumental songs Of course, it's Jimmy Page like he's the riff master general, right? So there's there's some interesting ideas there, but there's they don't have anything to say There's not a lot of substance to these things Which is a misstep when you're doing a track without any vocals or anything like that um, And you're really kind of thinking more of a mainstream rock audience that maybe isn't musically inclined like it's hard to grab somebody's attention and keep it there. So when you're building an instrumental track, that's kind of one of the things you want to keep in mind. And um, again, interesting ideas, but not a lot of substance. If I had to pick um, a standout tune, I would pick Prison Blues. Um, uh, Jimmy Page very clearly excels in a blues format. He just gets it. Um, and with this, he knows how to punctuate those vocal lines. He's doing the call and response thing. And of course, the licks are awesome. The soloing is awesome on this song. Uh, it's a highlight for sure. And uh, interestingly enough, it's also when the album kind of shifts tone a little bit. And I think, it, oddly enough, it gets better. <laughs> um, but I think had they kind of stuck with the same kind of ideas and, and as far as how the songs sound and like the the lyrics and the composition and things like that of the from prison blues to the end of the album that's like three or four songs if they kind of applied that to the whole album um i think it would have fared a lot better because one of the critiques you'll read about and especially if you go back into old rolling stone articles and things like that from the time that the album came out 
They say it feels rushed, and I think that's a misinterpretation of events. I think what critics are hearing as rushed is actually just a lack of direction. Any album, any piece of music you need to have, it needs to go somewhere, um, and um, so I don't, there's not a lack of cohesion between songs. It feels like he just had a bunch of material and a bunch of friends willing to record this material with him, and so they kind of just, you know, they just, you know, they did it. But it's not rushed because a lot of care went into the production and the sound uh, of everything, and that's evident, and it feels loose but it doesn't feel rushed to me. Rushed implies that there was a level of haste and things got forgotten. And that's very clearly not what is happening on Outrider. I guess to summarize my thoughts on Outrider, it's not as bad as like critics and fans say. Um, there is, I, it's worth a listen for any Led Zeppelin fan for sure, for guitarists who kind of want to, you know, hear Jimmy Page not in his element, I guess, which is Led Zeppelin and things like that, is worth a check, a uh, listen, if you're just curious. Um, again, I mean, if nothing else, at least check out the track Prison Blues. Um, the vocal performance on that, I forget the singer's name. Editor Zach, put it like right here or right here, something like that. But it's a good vocal performance, good guitar performance as well. Um, if nothing else, at least check out Prison Blues. This is one of those circumstances when even the artist doesn't really have much to say in defense of their work. In an interview with Uncut Magazine in 2009, Page said of the album, Outrider's alright. It's demo-like compared to those overproduced albums that came out at the time. It didn't do very well. Doesn't matter. But I did tour. I was playing music on that tour going right back to the Yardbirds. Jason Bonham was the drummer on that tour. Honestly, it seems like the Outrider tour did better than the album itself, at least commercially. Um, as I re-listened to the album and, and poked around Reddit, it's clear that this album is an enigma. People either really love it, or they really love to hate it. And it seems to me, um, when I'm reading these comments and reviews and things like that, on various corners of the internet, it seems to me that the things that people like about it um, are the things that people hate and vice versa, so it's just a weird experience. Um, I know that this was supposed to be um, a two album kind of deal, but some tapes, some demo tapes got stolen for the follow-up album, and, and there weren't any demos, as far as I know, for the Outrider album itself, which is also odd. Um, but it seems like every so often Jimmy Page will tease new music but nothing ever materializes. I know that he, uh, obviously he goes back about every 10 years or so and remasters the entire discography of Led Zeppelin, which is nice, but I also think a follow-up to Outrider would also be nice. Um, I think there is enough of love for the album and obviously enough love for Jimmy Page that um, people will eat up anything he puts out. But um, he's mostly quiet these days. I know he did come out recently to play the Rumble at Link Ray's introduction to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but uh, he's basically retired at this point, which is, is a shame. But in any case, the reason why we're not supposed to hear this album to just kind of put a pin in this would be its poor critical reception, which is guaranteed to bury any album of this type in the annals of history, but poor critical reception, and Jimmy Page's own kind of laissez-faire attitude about the album, where he's like, yeah, I did it, uh, there it is. Listen to it, don't listen to it. I'm gonna produce poetry records for my girlfriend or occasionally show up at live events related to Led Zeppelin. But that is, in my opinion, why we're not supposed to hear this album. And that is Outrider by Jimmy Page, plus some of my thoughts on the album. Let me know what you thought of the album if you've listened to it. Leave a comment down below. Also, maybe if you saw the tour uh, in the late 80s for the album, I'll be very curious to hear some of those stories as well. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this little uh, video. Watch me geek out about one of my guitar heroes. It really does mean the most. I would appreciate it if you would like the video. Share it around with your friends. Leave a comment. It does help me 
skyrocket through the algorithms as it were. Would also appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to the YouTube channel for videos like this, guitar lessons. Another benefit of subscribing to my YouTube channel is that you get to hang out with me each and every Tuesday night for a musical hangout, the live music experience that the, everybody in the new year is talking about, let me tell you. Would also appreciate it if you would click the links down below to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, what have you, and maybe listen to some of my Jimmy Page inspired um, utterances on Spotify, Amazon, what have you. I do have a brand spank new album that is now streaming called Imaginary Songs. Would appreciate it if you would check that out. There's some singing, some songwriting, and some epic guitar riffing on that album. I would really appreciate it if you would check it out. That is all I have for you for this video. I am Zach Oval, singer, songwriter, guitar player extraordinaire, signing off, reminding you that a clear conscience is a sign of bad memory. Bread is bread, cheese is cheese, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.